what is up guys welcome to another video i hope you guys are all doing good okay now in this video we're gonna break down the six month plan of how to become a full-time youtuber i started this youtube channel back in november 2020 and within six to seven months i had quit my job to become a full-time content creator every time i tell people that they always ask me the same question how? Mm. How? How did I grow this creative business whilst working a full-time job? And how did I make the jump from working my nine to five to working for myself so quickly? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna take you through the first six months of my creator journey from when I went to uploading my first piece of content all the way through to handing in my notice at my mm. job. I'm gonna break down everything I did each month throughout that period of time. So if you are trying to become a full-time content creator or even a part-time- Wait, this is very interesting because I did this exactly, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what method she used to get out of jail. Oh my to God. Peter. This video is going to tell you exactly how I did that so that you can steal some of my strategies uh, and use them for uh, yourself. Uh, uh, by the way, guys, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. More on them later. All right, so let's kick off with November 2020. I'm so excited to film this. Okay. I don't know if you can tell. There's something about reminiscing on this time what just gets me so excited. I was even reading my journal entries so I could really cast myself back to that time and all that craziness that happened. Because these six months that I'm about to break down to you, they were genuinely the most transformative six months of my life. So November 2020, for every single month that we talk about, I'm going to talk about three specific things. The first thing is my social media strategy. The second will be my monetization strategy. So what was I doing to earn money during that time? And the third thing will be my time management because as i mentioned for my first six months in this business i did i gotta give it to her she's very organized she's very like i'm watching her videos make me think like maybe i should also have like little bullet points when i'm but i'm more of a just go with the flow and don't think too much and you know that's that's me as a person but i really like her structure when it comes to the video a full-time job and a rather demanding one at that so it's november 2020 and i have decided to launch this new brand this brand was actually called we side hustle can you let me know in the comments if you've been here since my we side hustle days because you are a true true og but it was originally called we side hustle because i had convinced myself that i needed a separate brand name this isn't a really important part of this story i just want to flag it in case you're someone who's holding back from starting your journey because of something really small like you don't know what to call yourself or you don't know what your brand is going to be called if this is really stopping you from from progressing then I want you just to make a decision and run with it because I ended up rebranding to my full name Jade Beeson a year into my journey and the world didn't end I was able to rebrand and everything was fine so I launched we side hustle now the reason why I started this brand was because I noticed when I was looking for creators who talk about the subjects that I talk about online I was rarely seeing creators who look like me being a black woman and who sounded like me being from England and I realized there was a diversity gap there that I wanted to fill 100% and that's something which I've noticed with social media as well. You have to find a certain pocket. You have to look at other people, see what works for them. And then after you see what works for them, then you see if maybe you can come into that market as a black man. Because maybe if there's not a lot of black people which are making videos like that, then you have an advantage because you're coming from the black perspective. That's one of the reasons why a lot of white content creators right now are moving over to hip hop, right? Because they know that there are not a lot of white content creators in hip hop. I also knew that I had over eight years experience in marketing. I had built side hustles and businesses before. I'd even built a small Instagram influencer channel before as well. So I was like, do you know what? I've got some knowledge to share here. I'm gonna hop online and share it. And believe it or not guys, back in November, 2020, this was not a popular niche. It's probably really hard to imagine because it's such a popular niche now. But back in 2020, it really wasn't popular. The reason why I started creating content Content about marketing, entrepreneurship, content creation was simply because that was what I knew, that's what my experience is in, that's what my degree is in, so therefore that was the value that I had to share. And I will be the first one to hold my hand up to say that there was some luck coming into play here because this was also around the time, everyone remembers what happened in 2020, where there was a huge increase of interest when it came to marketing, personal branding, social media. So it was the perfect storm for me at that time. Now I decided to launch my brand on Instagram and YouTube with YouTube being my primary channel and that has remained the case 
space throughout the years, even though I've added other channels like TikTok and Pinterest over time. I actually started my Instagram channel first because I knew how to do that quickly, just because of my previous experience. And I'm a firm believer that if you want to launch something, then you need to start creating content now, even if you're gonna work through it and figure it out over time, which you'll see as I take you through the next six months of my journey. So I started with Instagram and then I launched my first ever YouTube video, which I believe went live on the 15th of November. Now I started my YouTube channel using What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? If you're checking your phone, stop that. Instead, try this technique from my mobile phone. I had no microphone. I bought a ring light from Amazon and I edited my own videos using iMovie and then I moved on to DaVinci Resolve. Mm. And I used those simply because it was free. Like your girl was on a budget. I was trying to get this going for as little money as possible. And before you ask, no, I did not have any editing experience. I very much just looked up tutorials on YouTube and just played around with the different platforms and tried to make it work. Now, one of the most important things that I did in my first month of this business is that I set myself a commitment goal. So a commitment goal is essentially when you tell yourself that you are going to commit to something for a set period of time and you outline what that commitment is going to look like. So I've spoken about this before, but my commitment goal was that I was going to post content on YouTube consistently. For me at the time, that meant one long form video per week. There weren't even shorts at that time. <laughs> it's actually very funny because when I started with YouTube, totally different. Uh, I'm from Sweden, as you guys know, a little town which I hate but uh, I started filming YouTube videos I would film with were maybe what five of my friends so I thought to myself if I start creating music videos and posting them out on YouTube I'll be able to probably skip a step because people would want a platform right where they have all of the music videos and if I started in one city then probably I could get a lot of people following me. And that is exactly what happened. Now that I think of it, it's like, I created a specific niche which did not exist. So anyway, I committed to sharing one full YouTube video per week for at least 12 months. And I told myself that I was not allowed to skip a week mm -hmm. or I was not allowed to quit my YouTube journey until I had gotten to that 12 month mark. I set myself that goal because I knew that one of the biggest reasons why this business wouldn't work would be simply because I would quit. That's one of the biggest reasons why most people don't see success in this field is because they quit too early. You guys have probably seen this image being shared on socials before. I refer back to this image on like a weekly basis. It's really ingrained in my mind. It's of someone who's like mining for gold and there's two people, one person turns around just before they get it and the other person keeps going. I feel like that image just sums up why it's so important to have a commitment goal because honestly, if you keep going at something and you dedicate time and effort to improve the content you're creating, you will eventually get to the point where you reach your goal. You just need to make sure you- I disagree. I think we're born with it. There are certain people which just have it and other people which don't. If you really want this YouTube shit, you'll find a way. And that's what I've realized with myself because I start what, with seven people? The, there's only one man standing. Do you know how many times, guys, I wanted to just go out and party and just hang out with my friends and just say, no, I'm not gonna do it today. I'm too tired, no. Let me, let me have fun, let me go for it. Let me party, let me F this girl, but you have to wake up every day, you have to post, you have to post videos. So I look at it from this perspective. If you want to, if you really, really want to, you will. Because if I'm just looking at myself and I look at all the people that I started with, none of them are here. Imagine, I started with maybe what, seven people? Would post together, would vlog together, would do all that, and everybody at the beginning were like, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it, yes. But then some people start to drop off. Then we went to Stockholm. We're in Stockholm. Hey, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Can you subscribe? Like, my name is Yambo Davidson. Oh, I have a YouTube channel. We, we're standing, me and my friend Brandon. We're there, we're standing in Stockholm. But as we're moving, as we're climbing the mountain, more and more people are falling off. And at the end of the day, I'm the only person here. And I know, yes, People will tell you that you can start, but I have to say this, right? You know if you can or if you can't, you know it. I told myself already from the beginning, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to end up on the street. Those are my two options. 
Let's continue. We don't quit. So anyway, that was my commitment goal. I started sharing content on YouTube and we were off to the races. Okay. Now, obviously in November, 2020, I'd only just launched. So you're probably thinking I wasn't making any money moves just yet, yeah. but you would be wrong. I actually immediately started joining affiliate programs mm. and including affiliate links in my content from day one. And I did this because I had faith that my content would start to perform really well in the future. And I knew that if that was the case, people would be able to find my older videos and find affiliate links in the mm. description box or in my link in bio. So even though I wasn't accepted to a lot of affiliate programs because my audience was non-existent, I still tried to find ones that would accept me and I started to use affiliate links wherever I could. You might be wondering how I found the time to launch my YouTube channel, my Instagram channel and this overall brand in November 2020. Well, I was working full time, but I was working from home because again of that big thing that happened in 2020. Mm. Let's just call it the big C. Because of the big <laughs> C, I was working from home and also I had no social plans because we weren't able to go out and meet friends and stuff. So I actually had more time than usual. So at this time in my journey, I was dedicating one full day a week, which was usually Sunday, to do all of my prepping, my filming and my editing for all of my social content. And that was enough for me at the time. And if you're starting out on your journey, that will probably be enough for you just to get started too. All right, so it's now December, 2020. It's Christmas, bells are ringing. No one is cheerful because of the big C, which mm. basically canceled Christmas because no one could see their families. But let's not reminisce on the bad times. In December, 2020, my content was all over the place. I knew that I wanted to create content about marketing and branding, but those are still pretty general and broad topics. Mm. So I found myself creating content that was about e-commerce, also about branding, but also about influencing. It was a bit all over the place and it was very varied. And a lot of those videos are still live on my YouTube channel and all of that content is still on my Instagram. Something which I noticed already from the beginning is like, YouTube is more a reflection of you. I've always been a very popular person. People for some reason have always gravitated towards me. I can't pinpoint why specifically, but maybe there's something about me. Maybe I joke a lot or maybe I'm very honest. I have, I have no idea. But I thought to myself, if this is what's happening in real life, people are constantly interested in my opinions and they want to hang out with me, then maybe I could transfer that to a YouTube channel. So it was a bit all over the place. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> It's fine. When you're starting out on your journey, if you don't know exactly what route you mm. want to go down, it's okay to share content that's varied because later on down the line, you'll be able to reflect on that content and actually figure out which content performs best for you and yeah. which content you enjoy to create the most. And that is exactly what I did, but I'll tell you yeah. a bit about that. Throw a lot of things on the wall and see what sticks. 100% later. I was trying to improve my content quality at the time. I wasn't doing a great job at it. I was still doing this thing where I'd look at my phone lens so my eyes would be like there rather than there. And I did that for a while. It took me a while to break out of that habit. But you know what? It was early days. It was all about testing, learning and improving. Mm. And that's okay. Around this time, I had a few hundred people following me on Instagram. A lot of those people were friends and family. And on YouTube, my content was averaging like 700 views a month. So we're still very much in our early days, right? Mm. Did not stop me from making another money move though. So, so far, I already have a few affiliate links embedded. They're not getting any traffic because my content's not getting many views, but that's okay. But then in December, I actually decided to launch an email list. So in order for me to do this, I created this quiz. This is what you get if you invested $20 for one month. Jesus. Which would tell you whether or not you were ready to become an influencer. So people would complete this quiz and they would sometimes give me their email address. So I was gaining 10, 20 email subscribers through this quiz. The reason why I started to build my email list was partly because of my marketing background, I knew that this would be a really important marketing channel for me, but also because I was getting ready to launch my first ever digital product the next month. Okay. That's right, guys. I only had a couple hundred people in my audience, but here I was creating my first digital product. Was I a bit delulu? Yes. And do you know what? So should you be. In the mm. early stages, we're naive, we're delusional, and it's beautiful because that is what drives us to take risks and to create things which, in hindsight, are probably the wrong time to create them or really difficult to create. But you just do it anyway because you're so delusional and you have no idea how hard anything is. <laughs> it's a beautiful time. So anyway, I started to work on my first ebook. It was called The Influencer Hustle Kit, and I was getting ready to launch that the next month in January. Now, you might be wondering how I found the time to create an ebook because I'm still working full time at this point. And it okay. was around the 
second month where I started to dedicate the entire weekend to this. So I started to work on my social media content and on my ebook on both Saturday and Sunday. I would still make time to like go for walks because remember that was all we could do at the time. I'd still make time to go for walks with my now husband and blah, blah, blah. So there was a bit of balance, but yeah, I was pretty much spending my whole weekend working on this business. When it comes to my YouTube though, I made a significant change. And this change was regarding how I sourced the topics for my videos. Up until this point, I was creating videos about topics that I just felt interested in. I would sit down and think, okay, what do I want to talk about this week? And then sometimes I would do a quick search on YouTube to see if any other content exists and if it performed well in the past. And if it passed that very simple, very useless check, I would be like, okay, great. I'm going to go film a video about it. The reason why I say this check was useless is because you can search for almost anything on YouTube and find a video that is related to that topic that has performed well. Just because it's performed well at some point mm. doesn't mean it's going to perform well for you. Maybe that was a really popular topic five years ago. Maybe that video performed well because the person who created it has millions of subscribers. I wasn't taking in any of these considerations and I was just looking at these videos and thinking, well, someone made a video about this five years ago and it did well, so surely mine will do well too. If you want to start with YouTube, right, and you don't want to do these long form videos, start with shorts. Start filming like this on your phone. Just start filming, filming, filming. And you don't have to tell a lot of people about it. Just, oh, people are talking about this. Talk about it as well, right? Then you start to see, bam, something is happening to your algorithm, right? Because what the algorithm is, is just an AI gathering information for you. Oh yeah, you're really good at that. You're really good at that. You should focus more on that. You should focus more on that. Okay, try this, do that. But remember, it's people on the other side of the screen or on the other side of the camera, it's people. So communicate just like you would communicate to your friends. Talk about exactly what you and your friends are talking about. Like sometimes I phone my friends, hey, do you hear this happen? Oh, and then we're sitting and talking about it. <laughs> Sit down, make a video about it. If you're starting off, don't overthink because a lot of people are like, yeah, I gotta be perfect at this. Like my videos right now suck. Some of them I put out a video and I'm like, ah, let me just, Oh, it's a Friday and I don't really want to put out a video, but I just do something because doing is better than sitting there and procrastinating and then trying to figure out, okay, it has to be perfect before I even start. Like the way that I look and I stop that, just post. And that really never worked for me. In January though, I started to be a bit more strategic and I started to create YouTube videos that I believed were about trending topics. So I'd go to YouTube, I would search for the topic I wanted to talk about that week. And instead of just taking the results at face value, I would filter the results. Mm. So I would look at any videos that were shared about that topic within the last year. I would look at the creators of those videos to see, did they have a huge audience? Mm. Was that why that topic performed well? And I would use these different signals to select video topics that I thought would actually take off. And spoiler alert, it worked. In the month of January, my channel got 4,000 views versus the 700 views that it got the month before. So this was really the turning point where my social content started to take off. As you might the recall. Wow. This was also the month where I launched my first digital product. It was my ebook and it was all about influencing. Now, when I launched it, I made about 200 to 300 pounds, which I think is pretty good when you consider the fact that I literally had 800 people in my audience mm. split between YouTube, which had like 250 subscribers at the time and Instagram, which had a few more followers. So I actually think that's pretty impressive. A lot of that was down to the fact that I had started to grow an email list the month before. I had maybe 70 people on my email. This is something which I need to work on my email list and a digital product, but that's going to come in the future. First establish trust with your audience, then you can start giving them products. That's at least my strategy. I'm not going to try to funnel some stupid product because at the end of the day, it doesn't really work like that. I wouldn't buy anything from somebody if I can't really see that that person first A is using it and B really believes in the product. Like you can take Logan Paul as an example. The, the drink, the prime drink, that is maybe the worst drink ever. And they're just shoving it down your face. And time is going to put Logan 
in his place. But it was enough for me to get a few sales and to start to earn an income, which was great. As you probably guess, things are starting to get busier. My time management skills are starting to be really pushed to the limit. Not only am I now working every Saturday and Sunday, but I've started to work some early mornings too. So in my old job, I used to start work at half nine. So I would wake up at five and then work until like nine. Mm. And then I'd get ready for half an hour and then I'd start my office job. So around this time, I started to do that like once or twice a week in addition to Saturday and Sunday. You might think to yourself that sounds like too much work that sounds like a lot but honestly by this point I was so committed and I was starting to see results and hold on to your seats because whilst you're probably thinking those results aren't enough to make you want to work that much soon I would start to really reap the rewards of how much effort I was putting into this brand before we get there though let's move on to the next month which was February 2021 now I didn't make any major changes to my social media strategy at this point because I just made a change now this feels like the appropriate time to share a little nugget of wisdom. I don't like saying that because it makes me sound like I'm being condescending. I don't know, just like a tip with you guys that I've consistently stuck to since the beginning of my social media brand. Now, the tip is that if you're gonna make any significant changes to your social media content or to your strategy, you need to stick with those changes for at least a couple of months. You need to give yourself enough time to really trial whatever changes you're making because it's hard to know what's really working until you've given it a good amount of time for it to actually work. So I had just made some big changes to my strategy in the previous month, so I wasn't about to make some major changes in this month either. What did change this month though was that I introduced another income stream. Your girl is adding one like once a month at this point. <laughs> this was when I started to coach. This was when I had my first inbound inquiry from someone who followed me who said, hey, can you hop on a call for an hour? I will pay you. I just want to pick your brain. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I didn't know what to charge. So I think I charged 50. That is something which I actually, actually want to do in the future. Like calls, work with other YouTubers, work with the algorithm, and try to give them some kind of guidance. So yes, that is going to be my digital product. It's great that she said it, that is gonna be my digital product. I'm going to try to help other people start off. And I think the best thing to do is we sit down and we do maybe like weekly sessions. 50 pounds at the time. I was like, yeah, sure, 50 quid, like let's go for it, right? We went ahead and we had a call. This was the beginning of a huge monetization strategy for me. This was when I started to create products and services purely based on what people were asking for me. So if someone commented saying, you should offer audits, I would create audits. You should create a course, I would create a course. It is worth noting that that has changed ever so slightly now. I've been very fortunate to be able to take a step back, restructure my business and really only offer things things that really align with my future goals. But when you're in the early stages and you're trying to earn an income and you're trying to figure out what you enjoy creating and what you don't enjoy creating, doing it based on audience demand is the best way for mm. you to do it. Sure. By this point, I'm starting to earn between 500 to 1,000 pounds per month. <sighs> and that is from a variety of different places. Whoa. It's from affiliates, from coaching, and from my ebook. I'm not yet monetized on YouTube. Also, as you probably guessed, I'm starting to spend even more time on this. Things were really starting to take over my life at this point. I was now working from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. pretty much every single day of the week, and then also working Saturday and Sunday. This was still a time where the big C was running rampant, so obviously I didn't have a lot of social obligations anyway, but even if I did, I would do them during the evenings during the week, or maybe in the mornings of the weekend. I always found ways to still see my friends and family because that was the only way that I would remain sane during in this intense period of work because as a reminder I'm still working full-time and I think this was the time where I actually got promoted so I got promoted and I was reporting directly into our CEO so my job got harder and so did this brand that I was building so things things were getting stressful fortunately for me though this next month was about to prove just how much of an impact all of this time and energy was about to have on my life so let's move on to March 2021 guys this month Things were starting to happen. This is what my analytics look like in March, 2021. Yes, the views have increased. Yes, the subscribers, the watch hours, but look at what's happening towards the end of that month. What you're seeing right there is the beginning of my channel's blow up. And that is purely a result of me riding through my trial and error phase for the first few months of my journey and then refining my strategy from that point onwards. In addition to focusing on trending topics, another thing that I started to do around this time was I started to niche down slightly. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that you need to niche down. I have a whole video about what to do if you want to niche down versus not niching down. What I do want to say though is that I decided to niche down and I did that because I was noticing that some topics were performing better than others. So things about social media, things about content creation and influencing, those topics were performing better, but also I preferred to talk about them. I was more interested in these subjects and mm. I found myself gravitating towards these subjects anyway. So I decided to 
And niching is if you love a specific topic so much, then I think that you should niche yourself into it. But I do also think that for your sanity, it's good to talk about a lot of things, right? Because if you are just focused on hip hop, hip hop, after a while it becomes a little bit too much. It becomes a little bit repetitive. Another very notable thing happened is, you guessed it, a new income stream. Mm. This time, partnerships. You are probably thinking, how did you get partnerships when you had like under a thousand subscribers? What I did, I pitched my brand, I negotiated a three month deal for wow. 1,000 pounds. I know, and I negotiated it based on my channel's projections. Or, this is what I mean about Delulu, your girl had confidence. I was like, look, I know I only have, I don't know, 700 subscribers right now, but I'm gaining 300 a month. So in six months time, when your content is still live, I will probably have this many subscribers. In my defense, I was right. And that content performed really well for that brand. So it was a real win-win, but whew, was that a ballsy move? I was super stressed at this time. March was when I was starting to lose grip on a few things. I was approaching burnout for sure. Because oh. you remember that I'm working on this pretty much every day of the week now, and I'm still working full time in a new role that was more senior and very challenging. And I was struggling and I was really starting to question my full time job. I was starting to wonder how long I could keep this up for and what it would take for me to quit my full time job and go full. The difference between me is I just got fired. That's what happened. They just didn't like the fact that I was doing YouTube and working at the same time. So then I decided, I was like, okay, um, I really love this YouTube thing. I'm gonna really focus on it. What, maybe what, six months before, then I kind of I kind of figured out that if I continue on this path, we're going to come to a, a clash after a while. So. I prepared myself eight months, started saving a lot of money and then had some savings. And then from that, I could continue doing YouTube. Time. Little did I know, the time for me to quit my full-time job was rapidly approaching. But before we get there, let's talk about the most significant month in my entire content creation career to date. We're talking about April 2021. That was, oh wait, I just realized that was literally, I mean, it's May now, but that was literally like three years ago today, which is so crazy because how much can change? This mm. was the month where genuinely my life changed. I had no idea at the time, but my life was about to change. Coincidentally, this was also the month where I got the most ill that I have ever been in my entire life. I was sick for pretty much this entire month, bed bound like in and out of hospital, really sick. So all of these things were happening behind the scenes. And the reason why these things were happening and I was able to reach some of the milestones that I'm about to share with you was thanks to batching. I talk about batching, batching. my content, which basically means I create my content in advance and I schedule it to go live without me having to lift a finger. I talk about that all the time. And guys, this is why I was sick the whole month of April, but still had content going live and even starting to go semi-viral. It was wild. So a lot of the action was happening over on my YouTube channel. My Instagram was like ticking along in the background. You might remember that this is what my stats looked like the month prior. Mm. Well, this is what they looked like in April 2021. Mm. I went from 7,000 to 76,000 views. And you'll notice that there's some money added to the screen. And that's because towards the end of April 2021, I got monetized. I reached 4,000 watch hours. I had 1,000 subscribers. And I was able to start earning money through YouTube. Which, you guessed it, guys, is another income stream that I've just added just five months after starting my social media channels. So now I'm making between 1,000 to 2,000 per month through this business and I'm starting to stockpile that money. I'm doing things like paying off credit card debt. I'm saving for my emergency fund because whilst all these amazing things are happening, I'm aware that this is not sustainable. And at some point something's got to give. And at this time, I'm becoming convinced that that thing will need to be my full-time job. We're at the final month now. Let's talk about what happened in May, which got me to the point where I was ready to quit my job the next month, which was June, 2021. So in May, my Instagram gained a few thousand followers and that was mostly due to this. This is a screenshot of my analytics in May. Yes, they look very different from the month before. In fact, my view count had increased by over 100,000 and my first paycheck on YouTube was over 1,600 pounds which is wild because I didn't have that many subscribers. To make that much money on your first full month of being monetized on YouTube is just absolutely wild. This meant that all of my income streams were now making me between 4,000 to 5,000 pounds per month. And as I mentioned, I was stockpiling a lot of that because I had- Imagine guys, that's what, 50,000 Swedish crowns. That's a lot. Officially decided that it was time for me to quit my job. Yeah. 
So I actually handed in my notice the next month and I had a two month notice period, which is super common in the UK. I already knew all of this. So whilst I had already started to save an emergency fund, I knew that I'd have at least two to three more months to continue saving for that before I actually stopped earning from my full-time job. Mm. So that really helped me. A huge caveat. So that's where we're gonna end this video. Uh, I'll have to leave you guys with this. Stop watching videos like this. Don't sit and wait for it. Do it today. Yes, this is a motivational video for you guys to start. And just go for it. I'm in Thailand right now and today I'm going to be posting videos about maybe what the apartment and because I'm just trying a bunch of things. But then again, my channel and her channel, we were a little bit different. She has a and yeah, she's more niched into marketing and how to start YouTube channels and things to think about on social media, but I'm not really interested in that. I might dig into it a little bit deeper later, but right now I just want to relax. I just want to figure out what the algorithm is and then I can niche myself because I think when you're starting off, the best thing to do is to do. I, I hope you guys have learned something from this video. Like, comment, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. You gotta say peace. You gotta peace it up.